Hey guys, before we start the video, I wanted to talk about today's sponsor, Aura. Now, if you recall, I had my Google account hacked before, and I nearly lost everything attached to it. Uh, we're talking uh, my, my email, my YouTube accounts, how I make my living, currently, all was taken from me. It really opened my eyes to the dangers of today, and just how exposed we truly are to scammers, spammers, hackers, etc. I also found out that my information was being sold through data brokers. For those who may be unaware, data brokers sell your information to anyone else who could send you spam mail slash email, uh, text messages, they can attempt to scam you online, get into your accounts, you know, anything. Your full name, email, home address, health records, your relatives, it's all out there. It's scary. I tried manually searching and seeing if I could scrub away the information, and I did find that they had some of my old addresses, phone numbers, even a P.O. box that I used while I was attending university. But there are just too many data brokers out there. It, it seemed impossible. That's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to access my social media accounts, uh, bank accounts, other sensitive information, you name it. Aura do more than just that, though. They offer antivirus protection, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, just to name a few tools in their one package suite. You don't need multiple applications to do all these things anymore. Aura have it all under one name. And for this level of protection, it's honestly a good price. Right now, you can sign up using my link at aura.com slash nate narrates and get a two week free trial to try them out for yourselves. They even have family plans so you can protect yourself and your loved ones. Honestly, it's it's brought me so much peace of mind that I can get back to making videos and pursuing the, the, the my passion without, without worrying if I've left any devices vulnerable. It's always good to be prepared for potential threats, even the ones you can't see. At least with Aura, I know I'm protected online no matter what device I use. If you've been wondering what you should be using online to protect yourself, you should probably click the link today and try it out for yourselves. That's aura.com slash Nate Narrates, N-A-T-E-N-A-R-R-A-T-E-S. I'll also pop the link in the description below. Right, on with the story. Camping in Willow Creek Forest. The arrival of autumn heralded a significant shift in the air. His gentle descent brought a crisp chill that wrapped the world in an embrace of amber leaves and the promise of cozy fireside gatherings. For five childhood friends, Katie, Ben, Ashley, Mark, and Peter, this seasonal transformation was a vivid reminder of their shared memories from years past. The idea of rekindling those bonds was too tempting to resist. Thus, a nostalgic camping trip was born. The friends had assembled at the edge of the forest, where the woods met the open expanse of a grassy clearing. Their faces lit up with the unmistakable spark of excitement, and the laughter that danced between them resonated through the autumn air. It was a symphony of joy and anticipation, heralding the adventures that lay ahead. With their backpacks packed, Tents erected and a flickering campfire casting warm, flickering light around them, they embarked on a trail that had long resided in the deepest corridors of their memories. It was a path carved by countless youthful explorations, yet they now ventured forth with fresh eyes and eager hearts, unaware of the chilling terror that awaited them in the heart of the woods. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the forest around them seemed to come alive. The whispers of leaves and the eerie rustle of unseen creatures sent shivers down their spines. They huddled close to the crackling fire, its warmth a comforting embrace against the growing unease that clung to the edges of their minds. It was Katie, the keen-eyed observer of the group, who first noticed the peculiar markings on nearby trees. Strange symbols etched deep into the gnarled bark appeared as ancient as time itself. A disconcerting shiver traced its path down her spine as she studied them. She momentarily hesitated to share her discovery for she knew that introducing such an ominous element could cast a shadow over their spirited night. Nevertheless, an unsettling blanket of discomfort settled over the campsite as the hours pressed on. The once vibrant forest now felt oppressive, its boughs and shadows hiding secrets they dared not imagine. The need to answer nature's call took Ben, the group's resident outdoorsman, away from the warmth of the campfire's glow. Armed with nothing but a flashlight and the knowledge of the wild, he ventured into the shadows. Yet, as he moved deeper into the woods, an undeniable sense of being watched began to gnaw at him. Minutes passed, but Ben did not return. Anxiety rippled through the group, and they called out his name into the thick silence that clung to the night. 
Then, like a blade cutting through the darkness, a gut-wrenching scream pierced the air. Panic surged through the group, coursing through their veins like a frigid river. They fumbled to grab their flashlights, and with hearts pounding, they rushed into the woods to find their missing friend. Ben was there, trembling and pale, on the edge of a small clearing. His eyes held the residual terror of his encounter, and he spoke in a voice quivering with fear. He described a monstrous creature with long, bony limbs and eyes that seemed to hold the weight of eons. The gaze of that beast had pierced his very soul, and the depths of his fear were etched across his face. The weight of dread grew heavier with each passing moment, but they understood the necessity of unity. They resolved to leave the forest immediately, and their footsteps quickened as they retraced their path. However, the forest seemed to conspire against them. The familiar trail now twisted and unrecognizable. Ashley, her voice trembling like a leaf in the wind, suggested that they temporarily split up in an attempt to find their way back. Reluctantly, they agreed, promising to meet at the trailhead. The darkness swallowed them whole as they embarked in different directions, their flashlight beams piercing the inky veil of night. Katie and Mark journeyed deeper into the forest, their hearts pounding in unison with the drumbeat of fear that echoed in their ears. Suddenly, a bone-chilling gust of wind swept through the trees, carrying an unnerving growl that set their skin on edge. Katie turned, and there it was, the gnarly creature, its eyes aflame like burning coals, hungering for their souls. They ran, their terror fueling every step. Though their footsteps were as soft as whispers, the beasts pursuing them were deafeningly loud. The two gathered twigs and dry leaves in a desperate bid for survival. With trembling hands, Mark managed to spark a small fire. The creature snarled and retreated, its fear reflected in the hollow depths of its eyes. Katie and Mark seized this fragile moment and ran, the tiny flame of their makeshift torch their only shield against the encroaching darkness. Meanwhile, Peter, Ben, and Ashley stumbled upon a worn-down cabin, burrowed deep within the woods. The door creaked open, revealing a decrepit interior that seemed to have witnessed horrors untold. As they ventured further into the shadowy cabin, their flashlights unveil remnants of dark rituals and sinister symbols etched into the walls and floor. The air grew colder and heavier, like an oppressive shroud settling around them. Their sense of dread intensified. A sudden bone-jarring crash reverberated through the cabin, startling them to the core. It felt like the forest had lunged at them, trying to break inside. Trembling and fearing the unknown, the trio fled into the night. Yet, the forest had a different terror in store for them. As they emerged from the cabin, they saw a sight that sent shivers down their spines. The gnarly creature, who had terrorized their friends, was waiting outside. It loomed over them, its hollow eyes glaring down at the cowering trio, its body taut and ready to strike. The creature's snarl filled the air, and it lunged at the terrified group, its razor-sharp claws reaching out like nightmarish talons. But just as it was on the verge of making its gruesome capture, a sensation of intense heat engulfed the creature's back. It let out a loud, anguished howl and retreated into the forest steps, vanishing like a phantom into the shadows. In stunned silence, Peter, Ben, and Ashley turned their gaze to where the beast had stood. There, emerging from the darkness like avenging angels, were Mark and Katie, their torches casting eerie flickers of light on their determined faces. Well, I guess splitting up wasn't such a bad idea after all, Katie remarked with a wry smile, extending her hand to Ashley as the collective relief of their reunion washed over them like a tidal wave. Home alone in Willow Creek. The evening unfurled in an explosive symphony of chaos as the wind waged a relentless battle, howling like a tormented spirit and unleashing torrents of rain upon the world. Emily, left in solitude within her family's ancient, creaking house, felt like a solitary vessel adrift on a turbulent sea. The flickering lights cast eerie and elongated shadows on the walls, a sinister dance choreographed by the storm outside. Rain tapped incessantly against the windows, a dissonant percussion adding to the unnerving atmosphere that pervaded her solitude. As the night deepened, an inexplicable unease began to gnaw at Emily's soul. She couldn't help but feel unseen eyes watching her every move a sensation that crawled through her like a thousand tiny insects. A chill raced down her spine, but she dismissed these ominous feelings as mere products of her overactive imagination. The darkness clung to her, 
growing thicker and more suffocating with each passing moment. An uninvited dread descended, looming over her like a shroud. She couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss, that she was teetering on the precipice of a nightmarish reality. And then, as if the fates themselves had conspired to terrify her, the power succumbed to the storm's relentless assault, leaving her in absolute darkness. Panic clutched at her chest, and she fumbled in her pocket, grasping a flashlight for a feeble ray of hope. She embarked on her trembling journey to the basement, where the circuit breaker held the key to restoring light to her besieged sanctuary. As she descended into the abyss, the creaking wooden stairs groaned beneath her weight. The dim beam of her flashlight revealed an eerie labyrinth of boxes and forgotten relics. As she neared the breaker panel, a soft, scratching sound reached her ears, a haunting murmur that crawled beneath her skin. She froze, her heart racing like a desperate beast pounding against the cage of her ribs. The scratching grew louder, becoming almost frantic, echoing through the basement like a ghostly symphony. Trepidation clung to her like an unwelcome companion, but she knew she had to confront whatever lurked behind that nearby door. Summoning every ounce of her courage, she approached the door cautiously. Her trembling hand grasped the doorknob, turning it with agonizing slowness. The door creaked open, and what met her eyes sent a shiver of terror coursing through her veins. Scratched into the walls were symbols, their strange and enigmatic designs etched in deep, grotesque grooves. They bore no resemblance to anything she had ever seen before, each symbol radiating an aura of hostility. Panic flooded her senses as she realized that she was not alone in the house, and that something sinister had left these grotesque marks. Her instincts screamed at her to flee, and she bolted back up the stairs, locking the basement door behind her. Emily's thoughts raced, trying to make sense of the cryptic symbols and the overwhelming sense of an ominous presence lurking in the shadows. Fear coursing through her, she decided to call the police, her trembling fingers dialing the emergency number. A voice answered on the other end, and she frantically explained the situation, the words tumbling out in a frantic rush as she felt the walls of her reality closing in. Minutes stretched in agony as she waited for the authorities to arrive. Every creak and rustle of the house's ancient timbers sent shivers down her spine, as if the house itself were conspiring against her. Suddenly, a loud crash shattered the silence, originating from somewhere above. She stifled a scream, gripping the phone tightly to her ear as the operator urged her to stay on the line, the disembodied voice offering a sliver of comfort in this nightmarish ordeal. With a deep breath, Emily slowly crept up the stairs, her flashlight's feeble beam illuminating the dark and sinister hallway. At the top, she faced the noise source, a shattered window, and the relentless rain pouring into the room like an evil river of despair. Dread washed over her as she realized that someone, or something, had breached the sanctity of her home, tearing through the fabric of her solitude. Before she could react, a bone-chilling whisper slithered through the air, a voice that sent icy tendrils of fear snaking down her spine. Emily, you won't escape me. The words were haunting, laden with a sinister promise that sent shivers racing across her skin. She turned, and there, barely visible in the inky shadows of the hallway, stood a grotesque figure, a specter of horror, like a phantom summoned from the darkest recesses of her nightmares. Fear surged through her veins, her heart a frenetic drumbeat in the face of abject terror, causing every fiber of her being to implore her to flee, to find sanctuary. She sprinted, her footsteps thundering on the hardwood floor aiming to reach her parents' bedroom and lock herself inside. As she entered the room, she couldn't help but glance at the full-length mirror on the wall, her reflection holding a sickening fascination. What she saw there froze her in place, her very soul recoiling in sheer, unadulterated terror. The rancorous figure that defied logic and reason stood behind her in the mirror's reflection. His twisted, gnarled fingers reached out, clawing at the thin veil that separated their worlds. Emily screamed, her voice a crescendo of sheer horror as she slammed the door shut and desperately searched for a hiding place. The figure outside the door began to slam against it, a relentless and violent assault, each impact sending shockwaves of terror through her. Panic engulfed her, her mind a whirlwind of chaotic thoughts as she sought a way to escape the clutches of this evil entity. With no time to spare, she made a heart-wrenching decision. Her hands shook as she climbed out of the window and onto the rain-soaked roof, the elements offering a cruel reminder of her vulnerability. She jumped to the ground, her bare feet soaking in the chilling puddles, and she sprinted towards her neighbor's house, where safety and a working phone awaited. 
Her trembling fingers dialed the emergency number once more. The authorities arrived reassuringly on a night marred by terror and uncertainty. They thoroughly searched Emily's home, every corner and crevice, but found no trace of the intruder. The symbols in the basement remained a cryptic puzzle, a riddle to which no solution could be found. Yet, deep in her heart, Emily knew that she had encountered something beyond the realm of the living, an entity that defied explanation. She knew that her world and her reality understanding had forever been altered. To this day, Emily could never feel at ease in Willow Creek. The memory of that terrifying night haunted her like an unrelenting ghost, a spectre that lingered at the edges of her consciousness, a constant reminder that the world was a far stranger and more mysterious place than she had ever imagined. Despite the reassurances of the police and her well-meaning parents, she knew the truth. She had not encountered mere paranoia or a figment of her imagination that night. She had come face to face with the otherworldly, with a realm beyond human understanding, and the scars of that encounter would remain etched in her memory until her last breath. Emily knew that some horrors were not bound by time or space, and that the shadows in the periphery held secrets that humanity was never meant to comprehend. Witches of Willow Creek a young woman named Isabella lived in the heart of a quaint village, nestled deep in a forest shrouded in whispers and legends. She was a curious soul, driven by a relentless thirst for adventure, that often led her into uncharted depths of the unknown. Throughout her life, Isabella had grown up listening to the hushed and eerie tales of the Willow Creek witches. These stories painted them as bearers of evil powers and participants in wicked secret rituals. The stories were chilling, yet they awakened in her a powerful intrigue compelling her to unravel the hidden truths behind these mysterious myths. On a moonlit night, when the fog crept and danced eerily around the ancient trees, Isabella embarked on a journey that would plunge her into the heart of those very whispers. With every step she took, the air grew colder, the silence more foreboding, and her heart pounded in her chest, a rhythm that mirrored the increasing intensity of her fear. In the enigmatic forest, she felt the watchful eyes of unseen entities bore into her creating an unshakable sensation that sent shivers coursing down her spine. Amongst the gnarled roots and tangled branches, her path led her to an ancient and moss-covered stone circle, an ominous clearing that the locals believed to be the witch's secret meeting place. Moonlight pierced through the dense canopy, casting eerie and spectral shadows that danced around the stones like phantoms. Isabella's heart raced with anticipation, for she knew she had reached the place she had long sought after, Suddenly, an unsettling gust of wind swept through the clearing, extinguishing her lantern. Panic surged through her veins, causing her to tremble with fear, but she summoned every ounce of her courage and relighted the lantern. In that precarious moment, she saw them. The witches emerged from the darkness, their figures cloaked in tattered robes and hoods. Their eyes gleamed like the fiery embers of a dying fire, reflecting malevolence in an ancient knowledge that sent a shiver down her spine. Who dares intrude upon our sacred ground? Hissed a voice from the shadows, its malevolence reverberating in the still night air. Isabella, her voice quivering but resolute, summoned her courage and replied, I seek knowledge and understanding, not to harm or disrupt. The witches exchanged knowing glances, their faces hidden by the shadows of their hoods. After a moment of tense silence, the eldest among them, a haggard crone with a hooked nose and eyes that seemed to have witnessed centuries of secrets, stepped forward. Young Seeker, she croaked, her voice like the rustling leaves in the autumn wind. Tread carefully in the realm of the unknown. Knowledge comes at a price, a price you may not be willing to pay. Undeterred by the crone's foreboding words, Isabella nodded and expressed her genuine desire to learn. The crone, sensing the sincerity in her words, beckoned her forward. She revealed an ancient and weathered book of spells and incantations, a tome that held centuries of their dark craft. As Isabella immersed herself in the macabre and otherworldly knowledge within, the witches grew increasingly sinister in their intentions. What Isabella did not know, however, was that knowledge, especially the kind that the witches possessed, was a double-edged sword. As her eyes studied the pages with unwavering enthusiasm, the witches began to cackle and hiss before harmonizing in an ancient melodic chant. Sit omnia potestas tibi scientia potestas mihi. A chilling sensation crawled down Isabella's spine, 
and her muscles tensed in response. She attempted to move, but it was futile. Her body had become a vessel of their evil power, transformed into the witch's living doll. Slowly, the witches circled the young girl, the chants growing louder as she ascended higher into the night sky. They threw their hands into the air in unison, sealing her fate with a final bone-chilling chant. Nunc sis unux ex nostris nos iunge casum venifice nostre. In an instant, Isabella's body contorted as her once pale skin shifted to a faded, eerie green. Her nose is crooked, her body adorned with grotesque warts, her teeth yellowed, and her eyes burned like embers of a dying fire. The transformation was complete, and Isabella became another victim of her insatiable curiosity. The witches had ensnared her, manipulating her thirst for knowledge to serve their own sinister purposes. As Isabella gazed upon her grotesque reflection in the moonlight, the true cost of her quest for enlightenment became hauntingly clear. The ancient dark wisdom she had sought, had come at a terrible price, leaving her forever altered and bound to the witch's coven, a living testament to the perilous consequences of venturing into the abyss of the unknown. Isabella's journey, which had begun with a simple desire to unravel the secrets of the Willow Creek witches, had taken an irreversible and chilling turn, forever entwining her fate with those who dwell in the darkest corners of human curiosity.